Welcome back to our channel. Today, we dive deep into a hot topic in coastal defense. Brahmos versus Mises. Two powerful systems, two very different philosophies. Let's break it all down. First, why is coastal defense so important? For countries like the Philippines, with thousands of islands and vast maritime territory, the ability to protect coastlines is a matter of national survival. But different threats and different terrains require different weapons. Enter the heavy-hitting Brahmos and the nimble Mises. Let's start with size and mobility. The Brahmos Next Generation Maritime Mobile Coastal Defense Battery, or NGMM CDB, is a beast. Mounted on a large military transport truck, the Brahmos firing unit is designed for serious firepower, but that comes with a cost. It's huge. It needs a heavy ship to move between islands, and it takes longer to set up and pack up when it's time to relocate. In a high-threat environment, that could be a problem. Now, compare that to the Navy Marine Expeditionary Ship Interdiction System, or MESIS. It's based on a smaller, optionally crewed, joint light tactical vehicle, the JLTV. It's small enough to be airlifted by a C-130 Hercules and can hide easily under foliage, inside caves, or under camouflage nets. Set up and tear down, much faster than Brahmos. In short, Brahmos equals heavy punch, but slower and harder to hide. Mises equals lighter punch, but fast and sneaky. Next, let's talk about the missiles themselves. The Brahmos missile, developed by Brahmos Aerospace, a joint venture between India and Russia, is supersonic. It travels at about Mach 2.8 to Mach 3.0. That's nearly three times the speed of sound. Plus, it packs a massive warhead designed to sink big ships. Think cruisers, amphibious assault ships, even aircraft carriers. Its listed range is 290 kilometers, but there's speculation newer versions could go even further. Perfect for defending the West Philippine Sea. On the other side, we have the Mises armed with the Kongsberg Naval Strike Missile. This one is subsonic, meaning it's slower, but it's stealthy. Designed with low radar cross-section and advanced jamming resistance, it can sneak through enemy defenses. It carries a smaller warhead, enough to cripple a ship, but probably not sink a large one outright. Its pre-programmed flight paths allow it to weave around terrain and enemy defenses. Ideal for tight island chains like the Luzon Strait and complicated environments like Palawan's southern tip. So, why is the Philippine Army and Marine Corps looking at both systems? Simple, different areas, different threats. In the West Philippine Sea, the need is clear. You need a big stick to deter big warships. Brahmos fits perfectly in the Luzon Strait, Southern Palawan, and the Sulu Sea Triborder Corridor. The terrain is tighter. You need something fast, mobile, and easy to hide. Mises is ideal. Using a mix of Brahmos and Mises gives the Philippines a layered coastal defense strategy. Heavy hitters for open waters, fast raiders for littoral zones. A smart move in modern warfare. Of course, there are challenges. Brahmos units will need large transport ships, proper roads, and secure bases to be fully effective. Mises units might be easier to move but their smaller missiles mean relying on multiple hits or precision strikes. There's also the question of cost, maintenance, training, and integration with the rest of the armed forces systems. But despite the challenges, acquiring these systems could be a game changer for Philippine coastal defense. Now, let's take a quick look at how both Brahmos and Mises fit into the bigger picture of regional security. The Indo-Pacific is rapidly becoming the center of strategic competition. Major powers are increasing their naval activities, and smaller nations like the Philippines are under growing pressure to secure their maritime zones. 
Having credible anti-ship missile systems sends a strong message. Any hostile action will come at a heavy cost. BrahMo's sheer destructive power acts as a major deterrent. It can force hostile fleets to think twice before entering Philippine waters, knowing that a single missile could neutralize their biggest ships. This kind of firepower strengthens national sovereignty and supports alliances by showing the Philippines can defend itself. On the other hand, Mises brings a new style of defense, dispersion, deception, and speed. In a modern battlefield where drones and satellites are everywhere, being able to move quickly, hide effectively, and strike with precision is crucial. Mises offers the ability to survive in a high-threat environment where bigger systems might be spotted and targeted first. There's also a strategic concept called archipelagic defense. In this approach, forces are spread across many islands, making it extremely hard for an enemy to wipe them out quickly. Brahmo's units can defend major areas like Palawan or Zambales, while Mises units can spread out across smaller islands in the Batons, Mindoro, or the Sulu Archipelago, creating a complex defense web. Finally, interoperability matters. The Mises system is closely tied to US and allied systems. That means easier joint operations, shared intelligence, and quicker reaction times in case of emergencies. Brahmos, while heavier and more standalone, could be customized to integrate into Philippine systems, giving greater flexibility. In short, these systems are not just weapons. They're part of a bigger strategy to protect Philippine interests, assert maritime rights, and contribute to regional stability. So, Brahmos or Mises. In truth, it's not a competition. It's about choosing the right tool for the right mission. Heavy punch when you need to destroy big threats. Fast and sneaky when you need to protect critical choke points. Together, they form a coastal defense shield fit for the 21st century. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and ring that notification bell. See you next time, and stay sharp.